How's it going guys? It's been a little bit since I've done a video with anything to do with hardware, so I figured I'd go ahead and do uh, one about this 2 terabyte NVMe SSD I got yesterday. I had um, 100, like, well, I had like 50 points on my credit card, and then I had uh, some pants I had returned, so I had like another 50, 60 bucks on there uh, in my on my Amazon balance, and so I put it towards this and ended up getting it afterwards. It was still, it was like a $240 drive. And like I say, it took a, after taxes and stuff, I ended up paying about 150 bucks. So it worked out pretty good for me. But this is the APS SE 20G 2 terabyte drive. This is a Gen 3, not a Gen 4, because I don't have um, a, a board that can use Gen 4 yet. I don't really think it matters that much. Like the read-write speeds, unless you're doing certain kinds of activities, it's like you're not going to notice it like in loading games or anything anyway. It's pretty much... You know, between Gen 3 and Gen 4 on the new NVMe drives, like the price is much, much more for the Gen 4s. And it's like, again, normal PC usage or gaming or whatever, you're never going to notice the difference. Unless uh, we get into the point where things just really, really start having large textures and stuff to load in memory. Maybe eventually it'll, you'll start needing it, but not yet. So I had it mounted on here. I have this Silverstone card that converts an M.2 card into a PCI Express 4.0 so I could put it in my motherboard without actually having to stick it in one of the M.2 slots. And I've already cloned over my OS onto it and I've moved all the files that I had on some other drives onto this so I could get those other drives out of the system. So I had, this is an old Samsung 850 Pro SSD and I've had that for, I don't know, several years. I don't even know how old it is off the top of my head. So I kind of figured it might be getting ready to, you know, I don't know how long the useful life is, but you know, uh, just in case it was a good idea to get something new and move it over. And then I have a one terabyte SanDisk Ultra 2. And then I have this PNY 480 gig SSD CS1111 model. But uh, pretty generic. You know, these, these are okay. But I had two of these and one of them died on me. I had them running on RAID at one point and one of them died, which is not really cool. And so uh, I don't know how reliable this one was going to be or how long it was going to last. But I decided that... Uh, I was going to move everything over onto this this two terabyte drive and get all the SATA devices out of my system. So I no longer have any SATA devices at all. I have a, a one terabyte crucial NVMe drive in there. And now that my OS is on this, uh, I will have a, this two terabyte Pioneer drive and nothing else. I will have two NVMe drives, no SATA devices, no SATA hard drives. Um, I do have, I bought a four terabyte Western Digital Black external USB drive, which I moved most of the stuff that I, like my video files that I use uh, for making YouTube videos, like my intro channels, uh, channel intros, sound effects, that kind of stuff. Uh, I put all that stuff, and like all my my uh, archived videos are on that drive now. And then I kept, um, I had a four terabyte internal drive. Uh, it's a, what the heck is it? Seagate Fire Cuda that I put um, in an external enclosure. It's like a dock, but it's USB-C, so it reads from it pretty quickly. So I put that uh you know, I stuck that in the dock and got those out of the system. So now there's no SATA wires of any kind in the PC. It gets some of that, you know, just helps clean things up a bit and look nice and smooth. And of course, these are very fast, so that's nice. But today, what we're really going to do the video for is I bought this uh, little heat sink for the MVME drive from a company called Thermalrite. And again, that was on uh, Amazon that I bought this. It's like $12 for this. It seems like maybe it was even less than that, but somewhere around that, somewhere around 10 12 bucks. And uh, I'm going to take this out of the box and get this thing back off of this adapter because I'm going to go ahead and put it into the motherboard now. Part of the thing is, is like my motherboard is a um, MSI Meg Ace Z390 board. And it's like if you want to use more than one of the NVMe slots, the bandwidth is provided by the chipset. But it's like it's mostly SATA bandwidth for SATA devices. If you have SATA drives plugged into, uh, like, for example, the bottom two or bottom four SATA ports, I forgot off the top of my head, but like that bandwidth is being used by the SATA drives, and so the bottom NVMe slot, or the bottom M.2 slot, uh, you know, doesn't it get, get shut off to, to, to save the bandwidth for the SATA devices. So if you remove all SATA from the system, I should be able to run this uh, using bandwidth provided by the chipset, and then my GPU should still run at 16x, even though I'm using two NVMe drives. That's what should happen. Uh, we'll find out if that's the case or not here in a minute. But I'm going to go ahead and open up this box here in a second. I'm going to get this off the board, uh, take this off of here, and we'll see what we got. Give me one second. All right, well, there wasn't much in that box. I mean, you've got the heat sink itself, which 
I'm not really 100% certain how the drive goes in there. Like, should it be facing that way? Should it be facing this way? It doesn't really say. And then this little Chinese card that comes with it, and that's all you get. So I guess it's just going to be a matter of guessing. It seems like on the board, excuse me, the motherboard, like this is usually facing this way because the sockets are all on this side of the board. They're on the right facing that way to plug into this way. Uh, so it seems like I would want to mount it this way. So this would be legible and, you know, facing up. You'd be able to read it on the board while the socket pins would be heading out that way to be allowed to be plugged into the motherboard. So I guess I'll see here in a second how this all works out. Let me take this apart and we'll have a look at it. One sec. So we've got that apart and it's like you get two thermal tapes on the top of the bottom so it'll stick slash that provides some conductivity between the chips, the memory, you know, the memory chips on here and the metal of the, therm of the heat sink. Uh, but basically I think the way it's going to look is I'm going to sit that on top pretty much and you can see the end sticks out that way and of course that'll be on the bottom side of it and then you just screw it back into position and it should stay together pretty well and then I should be able to plug it into the board without this getting in the way too much of anything. So I guess that's my next task is to screw this together and then I'll go hook it up to the machine and we'll see if it works correctly. Everything was working fine uh, through this card for sure. It was quite fast, quite snappy. Uh, it took like less than eight minutes to clone my old drive over onto this one. And honestly, like that was the limiting factor was the 850 Pro because you figure it was running every bit of, I think it said the trans, or you know, like the, the write rate was like 550 some odd megabytes per second. So you figure that's what the rate is of, tra of, of read rate off of this. You know, that was the bottleneck. But if this had been another NVMe drive, it would have been batshit crazy. When I was moving some of my, uh, stuff over in Windows, it was going like one and a half gigabytes per second. And that's, you know, like you can do more than that, but it just has, depends on what you're transferring from and to. But give me a second here and we'll put this together and then we'll go take it upstairs and hook it into the machine. See what happens. Be right back. Just as an FYI, but when you peel this blue film off of the thermal padding, um, like this lifts off with it and you end up like having to kind of reapply it yourself. Uh, it sticks pretty hard to this, and so like it's when you peel it away from the edge, like this all starts coming up with it, and you end up having to put it back on there, which is a little bit of a pain in the ass. So just bear that in mind. Uh, you know, it's a little bit janky in that regard. I think I got that backwards. There we go. But yeah, just a bit of a pain in the ass. So just keep that in mind. Be careful when you deal with it. Just uh, an FYI. All right, I got that on there. It's pretty aesthetic, really. I guess I just sandwiched it in there pretty much and screwed it back into place as, as you would expect. But it looks kind of nice. I think it's going to look good in my case. Uh, just hope that it actually works. That's always the, uh, the question here. I mean, like I said, I know it worked in the, the adapter card, but whether or not it's going to get the correct bandwidth, I'll have to run like a, um, what the hell is it called, like crystal disk uh, benchmark and make sure that it's getting the correct bandwidth and it's running at Gen 3 and not Gen, you know, like getting like 2.0 lanes for something for for some example, or or maybe only getting two lanes instead of four lanes. But I'll be back in a minute once I bring it upstairs, I'll get it hooked into the system. I have to take out my video card to fit it in because the top NVMe slot is kind of blocked by that a little bit, or at least it might make it difficult to put it in there, but I'll be back in just a minute. All right, so you should be able to see that installed in there. You can see I had to just kind of set my video card to the side for the moment because that was sort of in the way. It wouldn't probably have been that big of a deal, but I've got these mounting screws in the back for my water cooler and that's sort of covering that up a little bit but it should be all right once I get that in there if not uh, I may try putting it in the socket below the video card but hopefully it won't get anything's way so you got this dark rock pro in here I've been using for a little bit for the fun of it I got that off of uh, a guy locally um, on Facebook market which is pretty much like using Craigslist for like 60 bucks and I've kind of been enjoying using an air cooler for the fun of it for a while I haven't had any kind of an air cooler for a bit. So it's sort of weird. I went from using air cooler GPU and water cooled CPU to reversing it. So whatever. But it seems to be working pretty well. It keeps the CPU about 30 degrees pretty much all the time. It can uh, dissipate like 250 watts. So it's a pretty badass giant freaking thing though. You can see like it's rubbing against my RAM pretty much. That's why I had to put a fan on the inside because it was so big. Uh, the fans like on the outside would either bump off of where it says ACE over there. That little LED display there. 
and or the ram uh it's like it's so large that any fans you put on it end up bumping against that so like i said just jammed one in the center there and it seems like that's doing a pretty good job and then the fan in the back of course helps pull air out out of the case and keep it from getting too hot but anyways i'm gonna fire up the machine here and we'll see if she works correctly and make sure it still boots into the os and that it's running at the correct speed so give me one minute all right so you can see we've got our c drive is the pioneer mme drive 721 gigs free out of 1.86 terabytes it's because i transferred everything off those other drives onto that including the os drive which had quite a few things on it so it's still a pretty good amount of free space left on it got our crucial mvme drive and the focus is doing its dumb thing again sorry the western digital black which is a usb external drive and i don't have it on right now but i also have that fire cuda that's in an external enclosure but you can see we're back up to our pc express 16x 3.0 on our video card which means that the lanes that were being used previously by having that mvme drive in the little pci express uh, silverstone card adapter uh, have been allocated back to the card instead of being allocated to the drive so that freed up our gpu gpu is running at a nice little balmy 26 degrees in here it's kind of cold in here today so you know don't don't assume it's always that good but that's uh, idle of course but that's pretty good temp and then uh here we are, we did our read write test to the top one being what they usually use when they're rating these things. And as you can see, it's getting the correct speed of about 3,400 megabytes per second read and 3,029 megabytes per second write rate, which is exactly what it should be getting. That means the card is getting the correct bandwidth. So, or I'm sorry, the uh, the drive, not the card, the, the new Pioneer drive is getting the correct bandwidth. So my drives are getting what speed they should be. My GPU's back to the correct number of lanes, everything's hunky-dory. We're down to zero SATA devices in our system. Appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comment section below. Maybe give the channel a like, a thumbs up, something like that. Maybe even subscribe if you kind of like this sort of thing, and I'll try to do some more videos here in the near future. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great one. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.